everybody. Um, Kelly here and so excited to introduce you to this next amazing woman here in the Valley. Melissa Luna is owner of Luna Visuals. She is an artist by passion. She does a lot of amazing things with that passion and I can't wait for you to hear a little bit about it. So Alyssa, tell us a little bit about what Luna Visuals is. Yeah, so it's Luna Visuals is a little bit of everything, to be honest with you. Um, so the visuals part of it, it represents a lot of like what I like to do because there's not just like one thing that I'm interested in. It's like a little bit of everything. And when you say that, like, <clears throat> are you talking about, you know, something like this or this gorgeous painting or making clothes? Like, tell us a little bit about of what that yeah, looks like. Yeah, so the visuals part of it is more of like what I see and what I can do. Mm. So whether it's like fashion, whether it's art, whether it's like working with kids, it's just, you know, this is just my vision and this is what I have brought to the table yeah. and like made it work, you know? So right. It's been, How long have you had this business? We are going on four years. Four years. Yeah. Awesome. That's, that's no joke to be yeah. around for four years. I'm I, like, wow. Tell us a little bit about, I know you do these murals. You've got this gorgeous painting over here. We're going to get some video of, but what else is out there? Tell us a little bit about working with the kids. Yeah, so I am the art department at Tradition Golf Club. Ah. And so basically what we do uh, every year, they host like a kid's boot camp. And so this year we're actually going to be doing um, a, a workshop, which is painting uh, with the Easter Bunny. Sponge painting with the Easter <laughs> That's Bunny. That's right. Tell, what does that yeah, look yeah. like? Tell us what so that looks like. So basically what it is, is I'm creating a template uh, where these kids can come and just basically sponge paint around it and then when you remove the easter bunny there's like the template of the easter bunny and then like all the colorful little colors that they've created around it nice um so that's gonna be really cool last year we did a little bit of a squirt gun painting activity oh, that's fun so that was nice yeah it was fun the little kids really enjoyed themselves yeah. with those squirt guns <laughs> yeah so you do something like that every year with them yeah, so we do it at least twice a year, uh, normally around Easter time and then Thanksgiving time. Okay, cool. Yeah. Very cool. And so so what else are you doing in between that time? I mean, that's twice a year. So tell me a little bit about how busy you are. You did mention that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are some projects uh, you have going? So there's a lot going on right now. I host a lot of paint nights around town. So oh, good to know. If I'm not doing paint nights, I'm working on Firebird jackets, which if you've seen. I saw that. Tell yeah. me about that. That. So if you've seen any of those like rhinestone mm -hmm. custom jackets oh. at the arena, I do a lot of those. Oh, and wow. so right now I'm just trying to catch up on a lot of orders Yeah, because I've been so behind because of like how busy I've been, right. which has been really nice, you know, <laughs> sure. because I can't ask to be busy. And then when it's here, complain about it. Sure. sure. So how do you manage your time with all these different kinds of projects? It's not like you're only painting or only doing one thing like how do you manage that time Ooh, that's uh it's hard yeah. <laughs> i i feel like i'm constantly just making time you know uh for everything sometimes my days are just almost 16 hour days and sometimes wow. they're just you know like an eight hour day yeah but yeah it's it's there's a lot <laughs> what's been your favorite project that you've done so far and it's okay to pick two. I don't want you to pick just one favorite. There's but. a lot, though. Yeah. Oh, so tell thing. me. Yeah, tell us about them. I want to like, know. You can't just let me pick one. <laughs> tell me ab about some of your favorite projects. Oh, okay. So some of my favorite projects are I absolutely love doing murals. Those mm. are like probably my favorite because I feel like the bigger the canvas, the more creativity I get to have with it and more yeah. fun with it, right? 100%. Um, a lot of my paint nights, which is really cool because I get to network with so many different people and get to know, you know, a lot of individuals yeah. out here in town and right. be able to give people something to do. Right. Um, just because nobody really talks about how therapeutic painting can really be. It's like another form of like self-care. And so I really want to bring that more into the desert. Yeah. No, I, I think that's fantastic. And that's a great point because creating and like putting out something like on a canvas is very therapeutic, right? Like, and you get to help people channel that, even if they're not really aware that that's actually why they're there. 
yeah, you know, they're there to have fun, but it's mm-hmm. like, not really. Yeah. Um, I'm here to a little test your waters a little bit. And yeah. just, you know, you'll see that if you ever go to one of the events is like in the beginning, everybody's so scared and so nervous. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of them are just like, I've never painted before. Yeah. But then like at <laughs> yes. least an hour and a half into the event, it's like everybody's so quiet because they're so concentrated. And it's right. like, I thought everybody was so nervous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you broke them out of their shells. Yeah, you broke yeah. Them out of their and shells. so that when they go home, they're just like, oh, shit, like, we actually had a great time. Yeah. It's like, right. Yeah. That's you're awesome. welcome. Yeah. <laughs> so murals, and you said um, you like them because they're big. Do you, do you do a lot of collaborations with other artists and murals, or is that something that you do normally, or...? Yeah, so I actually have a collaboration, which is this one here mm-hmm. with uh, Shea Chavez Tattoo. She's another local artist here oh, in the cool. desert. Okay. Um, but most of the murals I've done outside of here are all done by me. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's really nice. Well, actually, I guess you can say it's a little bit of a collaboration with the owners as well. Okay. Because I do a lot of murals for... Mm-hmm. Airbnbs. Okay. I so so talk to me a little bit about that, that process. Yeah. So, well, because, um, you know, obviously these owners are hiring me to do a project for them mm-hmm. and obviously they have a vision. And so my goal is to really get to know my clients mm-hmm. and be able to give them, um, what they want on a mural. Right. So it, it's really, it really is a collaboration between myself and the owners okay you know because sometimes they have a vision it's like they don't know how to explain it so i'm (laughs) and they can't draw it (laughs) yeah they can't draw it so then that's where i come in and it's like okay well give me a little bit of feedback of what you are looking for Mm -hmm. like are you looking for like a desert theme are you looking for more realism are you looking for more colorful pop art you know there's a, a variety of different types of art and so that's where I come in and just create this beautiful masterpiece for them. Yeah. So it's cool. That's it's cool awesome. being able to do that. Yeah. And so, you know, you've been doing this for four years now. Uh, big decision to kind of say my art is going to be my livelihood. Right. I think that there's probably some fear behind making that decision. Was it a difficult one for you to decide, like, fuck it, I'm all in and this is what I'm going to do? Yeah. I mean, this was during COVID. Oh, and wow. So... You know, I feel like I've always had that artistic skills in me since I, I mean, since I was a kid, but during COVID, you know, obviously everything just shut down. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, well, shit, what am I supposed to do now? Right. Um, And then that's when I started picking up uh, my paintbrushes again and stuff like that. And so I guess you can say, thank you, COVID. (laughs) Hey. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, realistically, it was like, well, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. No. Right. Well, you get, we, and we get so caught up in like our day to day routine. Like this is Mm -hmm. what I, this is my job and this is what I'm going to do. And it's fine. It pays my bills. And I don't really have a reason to like do something different. And then when something like COVID happens, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to survive? And you go, it's a gift that you're able to go back to your passion and what you like love to do and be able to build that and have a successful business. Like that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, thanks. Thank you. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. if it wasn't for COVID, I highly doubt I'd be doing this. Right. What were you doing before COVID? Uh, so I was working two jobs. I was working as a brand ambassador for a distribution company out in Costa Mesa. Okay. And then I was also working um, for a screen printing company. Mm-hmm. So realistically I was still within like the artistic sure. side of it, but I wasn't like full time into right. how I am now. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it was definitely a change. Yeah. And I know I've always wanted to start a business, but it wasn't one of those where it's like, well, what would I be doing? Right. Like how am I going to, yeah. yeah. Like what kind of business would I be starting? And so, yeah. so when you made the decision uh, and you created Luna visuals and you started it, what was something that you, uh, like an obstacle that came up that you were not expecting? And what was actually really easy and then surprised you? Well, I mean, being a self-taught artist, mm-hmm. um, 
I really pushed myself. So I guess you can say an obstacle for me was really pushing myself to work with materials that I've never worked with before. Mm -hmm. Um, So normally, you know, people are really comfortable with just like acrylic paints, which are just super easy. But then I started picking up spray cans and I started picking Mm. up oil paints and then I started picking up um, sneaker designing. So things that I wasn't doing before, I now do now. And so that that was an obstacle. But I mean, as far as easy, oh, I mean, I feel like I've I've succeeded all those materials yeah. that I was so afraid of. And so yeah. now it's just like easy peasy to me. Right. And so now um, since you overcame that, it's like, well, what can I add? What can I add? Yeah. How can I learn how to do it really amazing and, and create that? Like yeah. we were talking about uh, face painting for kids. Like how can I add it and make it work? You oh, know? yeah. And see, I've never done face painting before. Uh-huh. But I know I want to bring that as a new service. Yeah. Out of like the hundred services I already have, I know I want to add that. <laughs> and it's like every day I'm always trying to add something new into what is its Luna Visuals can bring. Sure. Sure. So for your services, we know you do murals. You're making those fantastic jackets. You do sneakers. You are helping the kids. Like what's some other services? You do the paint nights. Um, you are, uh, what's some other things that you do? that people would need to know about? So I do a lot of business marketing as well, okay. which is like logos, uh, ah, very good to know business cards, flyers, things like that. Since I already do that for my business, it's like, well, I know what it's like to be a first time business owner. Mm. And so why not be able to also add that as a service? Like sure. if anybody needs it and to yeah. help, you know, branding is really important. Yeah. Branding is really important. <laughs> Yeah. And I learned the hard way. I learned <laughs> what it, do you mean? It's like I did not know anybody who was doing it. And it was like, ah, someone help me. <laughs> but now it's like, oh, okay, well, I can do this and I can help you with that. And yeah. so, yeah. you know, it's been really nice to be able to add and continuing to add more services into sure. my portfolio. Sure. So um, if somebody needed some of those things, how, what's the best way to get a hold of you? So normally I say through social media, um, I'm pretty consistent when it comes to Instagram. I try to be because also social media is really exhausting. (laughs) It's so exhausting. Tell us about it. (laughs) Honestly, I tell everybody all the time. I'm like, if I did not have a business, I would be off the grid. Haven't we heard that before? (laughs) Right? A hundred percent. And it's so important. Like in this world that we are in, people need to see what you do. They need to have a place to go do that. Uh, with ease and so it has to become part of your business yeah 100 percent. i know and it's so frustrating because i'm like i need a break i just need like a <laughs> social media cleanse can there. i just take a month off yeah <laughs> without losing like clientele right. and without losing you know people reaching out to me asking to do events and things like that maybe maybe we need to figure out a way where <laughs> yeah yeah you need to have like schedule a little time for for just you yeah if that's important you have to fill it your is. cup you have to take some time you have to do that because you can't you can't perform at the level that you want to or that people expect of you if you if, if you don't take that moment like i know yeah. i'm fucking terrible at that that's why i can say that because I know I always have to work yeah, on it, yeah. but it's so true. It's <laughs> no, so true. and then you're trying to reach out to me and I'm I like, don't respond. Me, I, don't. I, know. I know, and I don't respond for like days later and I'm like, I am so oh my God. sorry. No, it's all good. I was like, I swear I post stuff and then I get right off. Like I do not spend more than like an hour, not even 30 minutes on social media because yeah. I'm like, I need to work. I need to yeah. get off my phone because if not, I'll be here all day. Sure, sure. So... But tell us a little bit about this um, this painting you brought along. Uh, what what's the medium, or is it called a medium? So on this one, I use for the background, which represents a lot of the walls that I've built in my past. Hmm. Um, okay. And so I made it look more of like a brick feel to yeah, it. Yeah, I can you, see that. Yeah, if you see that there, uh, I used what did I use drywall for this. Oh wow! I used drywall to create that like texture, like to it, mm-hmm. and then obviously some tape to kind of give it that more um, of a sculpture, yeah, like yeah. look to it. Uh, but most of it was, yeah. I I used a lot of spray cans. I used a lot of acrylic paints, um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. So basically, drywall, very cool spray cans and acrylic paints. How long does something <laughs> like this take you? 
So, you know, I actually put her to the side for a little mm. bit. So I had started it and maybe like two, three months later, mm -hmm. I actually picked it up again. And I was okay. like, I want to finish this, but I don't know where I'm going with it really. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then eventually, as soon as it just all started clicking to me, it, it took me no more than maybe like two days to complete. Okay. Yeah, so once I get into my zone, it's like I'm locked in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want no distractions. Right, right. And do you find that that's kind of like the process over? You, yeah. Sometimes you just start something and then you need to set it aside. Um, or is there ever a moment where you just go? It's a hit or miss, mm -hmm. to be honest. There's days where I can be like, okay, cool. This is exactly what I have an idea. I want to put this onto a canvas. Like, let's do it. Then there's some days where it's like I start something, but I have no, like, goal for it mm -hmm. so then i have to like kind of step away from it come back and be like well what could i put on here right right I mean, realistically i could do anything right but what do i want to put on it what is there something that i kind of just want to get off my chest mm -hmm. and bring it into a painting right right so right. yeah and and this painting represents a lot of like the boss babe feels that mm -hmm. i was in that in that yeah. time and so um, I, I believe that's when maybe I need to start writing in the back, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like the feelings that I'm going through oh, yeah. during that painting, yeah. just to be able to give a better explanation. Because when it's once again, like once I'm in the zone, I'm in the zone. So it's, it's hard to give you that explanation now sure. since it's been so long, Sure, but it did have a lot to represent. Um, it represented a lot of like the boss babe feels and really just starting to love myself more mm -hmm. as an artist. I mean, technically it, it, not technically, but realistically, it's still a little surreal that I do this for a living. So when yeah. people ask me like, what's your occupation? I'm just like, um, well, I'm an artist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you, yeah. And you are, and you, mm -hmm. this is your occupation. So for other women, but just people in general who are, they, they have a passion they want to do something. They're thinking about this, but they're too afraid. Like what would be your one piece of advice for them to kind of get started? Well, I know what it's like to be in that position. Um, you know, I feel like when you know that your time is there to do it, just do it, mm -hmm. you know, you're never going to know what it's like or what the outcome is going to come into unless you try it. Right. Um, and so my grandma, my grandma is really big on always telling me, just do it, just do it. And it's like, yeah, this ain't no Nike campaign. I can't just do it. There's a lot that goes sure. with that. You know, I still have bills to pay. I still have things, you know, that require um, my finances and like, I can't just drop everything. Mm -hmm. But if I can give any type of advice is to honestly just do it, really just do it. Because if you don't, you're never going to know if it's going to work. If you or don't, not. the answer is already no. Yeah. If or if not, someone else is going to take your idea and guess what? They're going to flourish and you're just still there. Still waiting. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for <laughs> taking the time uh, to do this with us. Um, I, I think it's been great. And I know. Oh,